I recently conquered my fear of lighting matches, and now I find lighting matches very therapeutic. Or not. I've tried this multiple times, and I just can't seem to light a match on camera. I did it! I love matches, they're so pretty. Oh no, don't die. Okay, wait. I don't know why, but these matches are cursed. They just die at, right at the beginning. Let me try again. I'll see if I can get this one to survive. Okay, this one, this time I'll hold it sideways and see if that works. So pretty. My name is Tucker, um, pardon my voice, I'm still sick, I've had a cold for a week or two now, and it just won't go away, um, it's gotten a little better, like I'm not, I'm able to not cough every two seconds, but my voice is gonna sound weird, and I might cough every once in a while, but I'll do my best to edit it out and not cough. So today I'm going to be talking about advanced reader copies, um, everything from what they are, how to get them etc. Um, I'm doing this video because a lot of people have messaged me or commented on my review saying, I see that you said in your review, I got this book in exchange for an honest review. How do I do that? So today I'm going to be explaining all of that. So let's get into the video. Okay, now I will tell you how to get ARCs. Before I begin, I just want to restate that ARCs are for marketing and publicity and just getting the word out there. Unfortunately, they're really not for just an author's number one fan who wants to read the book before it comes out. I used to be that person. I used to think, oh, I want to get this ARC because I'll be able to read it before everyone else, but that's not really their purpose. And like not everyone can get arcs and I'll go into who is sent who um is sent arcs um specifically and why they're sent them in a minute but I just wanted to say that basically not everyone can get arcs unfortunately because if publishers un couldn't afford to send a free book to every single person who asked for one um but I will get into the logistics of all all of that in a minute but let me start by who is sent ARCs. Um, a lot of people are sent ARCs by different teams of publicity and marketing. But basically, the people who are sent ARCs are book reviewers or book bloggers, bookstagrammers, people who take book pictures and stuff on Instagram, booktubers, and authors, and sometimes celebrities. So... Um, celebrities and authors, you can probably, it's pretty self-explanatory why they're sent arcs, just so they can, like, put a blurb, like, let me see, um, right here, you can see how there are blurbs, and these are called blurbs, sorry, the little quotes from authors and celebrities, so that's why authors and celebrities are sent arcs, so they can write their little message blurb, um, talking about how great this book was, though I will tell you, I recently learned that not all blurbs are, like, true. Not true, not untrue, but, like, sometimes authors won't read the book. They'll just give, like, an official blurb statement without reading the book. That's what I've heard, but I don't know if it's true or not. So, um, so yeah, that's why authors and celebrities are sent arcs. Next, we have book reviewers, bookstagrammers, and booktubers, which are generally referred to as the book community. They are sent arcs for the same reason, um, but publishers are a little more picky with who in that community they send it to because anyone can call themselves a book blogger, but not everyone can get ARCs. Um, basically, publishers are looking for you to have a following or an audience, so um, you can't like just go on Goodreads, write two reviews, and then say, hey, guess what? I'm a book blogger. Send me an ARC. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I wish it did. I wish everyone could just get the books they wanted in. It would be a perfect world, but that's not how it works. Basically, 
publishers are looking for you, looking t for you to have um, at least one platform that has a general following. So whether that be a blog, Instagram, or YouTube, those all work. For some reason, most publishers don't consider Goodreads a main platform, which is really dumb because personally, that's my biggest platform. Um, but you just have to work with what they, what rules they set. Um, I personally have Instagram, Pinterest, Goodreads, and my blog, and YouTube. So I have all of those working for me, but I start out with Goodreads and my blog. Publishers, I don't think they have specific numbers for each of those platforms, but generally I would say try to get an amassed following of 1,000 followers, whether that be like 200 people on Goodreads, 500 people on your blog, and 300 people on your Instagram. Like, they want a general following because if they send you a book and then you have two followers, it's not worth it to them for you, for, um, you to have that book because you really can't get the word out there if you only have, like, two followers. Um, and I'm going to briefly talk about how to get followers because it can be frustrating to feel like, how am I supposed to get all these followers to get books? I feel like it's too hard or... Um, I feel like it's unfair, because I felt that too. I was like, it's unfair, I, I have reviewing capabilities, and I think I could write good reviews, but publishers won't send me books, because I don't have a big enough audience. So, what I recommend to grow your audience is interact. Interacting is so, so helpful. Um, follow people, send friend requests, comment on people's reviews, chat with people, and they will want to follow you back, and they will look at their stu your stuff. Um, the more you interact with the community, the more the community will interact with you, and then your following will build. Um, another thing is consistency. Don't write a review every other month, because then you won't get any followers, you won't get any, um, audience, because you're not active. Now, I'm not saying write a review every single day, that's, that's, like, ridiculous. I couldn't do that. But, be pretty consistent. Try to write maybe one review a week if you can, um, and if you can't, if you can't, or you're like, I simply don't have time to write a full review, um, this week or this, the next couple days, just comment, interact, just make sure you are staying active, liking, commenting, stuff like that. Um, and then finally, I, this is my biggest tip is be patient. It sucks that you have to be patient, but you do have to wait. You have to wait for people to interact back, you have to wait to gain followers, and you just have to wait for publishers to notice you. And it sucks, because you just want to, you're like, I'm ready, I want to review, I want to do this, but you do have to wait. It takes patience, um, it takes consistency, and all of that. And then, finally, I recommend starting with digital arcs before you try to get physical arcs. So, I recommend getting a NetGalley account or an Edelweiss account. I will leave the link to those sites down below. Basically, those sites offer digital arcs, um, which I mentioned earlier. They're basically arcs, but, like, PDFs, um, EPUB, Mobi, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, digital stuff that you can download and read on your phone or on your Kindle, stuff like that. And by reviewing those books and sending your reviews to the publishers via those sites, um, the publishers will start to notice you. They'll be like, oh, this person has reviewed a lot of my books and, um, they're consistent and they write really good reviews. I'm going to reach out to, to see if they would like a physical book. So yeah, again with consistency, um, but yeah, I definitely recommend Edelweiss or NetGalley just starting with Digital Arcs, because that's where I started and that's a good starting point. Um, next I'm going to read you my, um, ARC request template. So when requesting ARCs, I email publishers directly, and most publishers, in fact I would think all publishers have a publicity email. So like publicity at penguinrandomhouse.com or something like that. An email that you can email with your ARC request. Um, so that that's the email you would reach out to. If you don't know what the email is, I recommend just Googling like Penguin Random House publicity or Simon & Schuster publicity. Or if you're looking for a specific imprint, you could do Berkeley publicity and there will almost always be a result with like an email that you can email. Um, 
I have a template, like an, uh, um, kind of a default message I use to send ARC requests, especially to publishers I haven't interacted with, with before. Usually once I've interacted with a publicist multiple times, I don't use this, um, request template anymore because I, they know me, they know, like, my general following. I can say, hey, do you have a copy of so-and-so? Um, but I'm going to read my template, and I will also leave a link to the template, and you can, uh, copy it and make it your own. So here is my template. Hi, insert name of the publicist. I hope your week is going well. I'm e emailing you because I'm interested, insert in, insert title here, and then by blah blah blah. So I'm interested in... Um, I don't know. I'm interested in Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. This is just an example. Obviously, you can't get ARCs anymore. I'm wondering, I was wondering if there are copies of this book available for review or coverage. If so, I would love to acquire one. Upon receiving it, I will photograph it and upload the photo to Goodreads and Instagram along with a pre-review. A pre-review is simply a picture along with me thanking the publisher for the book as a placeholder until I write my full review. Um, I will also note that the publisher has sent me the book in exchange for an honest review as as requested by the FTC guidelines. I will get into the FTC guidelines in one moment, or in the next part of this video. After this, I will read and review the book, varying from, the review will vary from four to six paragraphs long and publish it on the following social platforms. And then, the, what I'm about to read is all my social platforms along with the specific stats. Goodreads, 2.3, 2, 2,300 followers, 300 to 400 views per review, 2,000 to 4,000 monthly views. My blog, Tucker the Reader, one, 105 followers, 200 to 300 views per review slash post, 1,000 to 1,500 monthly views and visitors. Pinterest, 20 followers, YouTube, 30 subscribers, and Instagram, 70 followers. Um... All the best, Tucker Almagor, and then I have my address in there. Um, excuse me. I think a lot of people would be like, oh, why would I send them my address? I don't want them to, like, see that. That's personal information. One, they won't kill you. They're not going to stalk you, I promise. And two, adding in your address kind of is easier so that if they do want to send you a physical book, they can just send it rather than them having to ask you for your address. And then it also is like, hey, here's my address, kind of like a hint, like a hint, hint, I want a physical copy if you have one. Um, so that is my template that I use to send to publishers. Again, I will leave it linked in the description. Um, yeah, and then obviously don't copy my stats, make them your own, edit put in your stats, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, that's how I request ARCs. Again, excuse me, I hate being sick. Um, again, patience, consistency, you will get there if you put in the hard work and just keep waiting. Good luck. Part 1. What are advanced reader copies? Advanced reader copies are early copies of a book that a publisher sends out before the book is released to the public. Um, they're sent out for publicity and marketing. Basically, a publisher will send out an advanced reader copy and hope that the person who receives it will enjoy it, or even if they don't talk about it, to give it um, marketing, to give it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, a, not a platform. Basically, to talk about it so more people know about it. Spread the word. That's the point of advanced reader copies. So, that's why when you see someone say, I received this uh, in exchange for an honest review, that's usually what publishers are looking for. They're looking for you to review the book or read the book or take a picture and talk about the book. They just want you to give the book some marketing and just talk about the book. Um, with advanced reader copies, there are multiple... I guess, levels of how early it is, um, and I'll go through those, because depending on how early or how close to the pub date you get the advanced reader copy, it could look different. So, the earliest you can get an advanced reader copy is a bound manuscript. These are a little harder for non authors or publishers to get, so this is harder for a reviewer to get, because publishers gen generally don't send them out. But this is a bound manuscript. 
Um, I don't know how much I can show you because it's copyrighted, but I'll just show you the inside. Basically, this is this book is basically a printed Google Doc that they bound up and sent to me. In fact, I don't know, I'm still confused why they sent it to me because it says, where does it say it? There's somewhere, um, yeah, I don't know. Somewhere in here it said this is only for Penguin, and, Penguin Random House employees, so I don't know why they sent it to me. Where is it? Struggle. Yeah. Manuscript. This electronic manuscript has been authorized by Penguin Random House for internal distribution only. It should not be reproduced, transmitted, or disclosed to anyone not employed by Penguin Random House. I am not employed by Penguin Random House, so technically I shouldn't have this, but I do, and I am grateful because this is my, the only bound manuscript that I, one of the only bound manuscripts that I have on my shelf, and I, I cherish it because it's just, it's special. The next level of advanced reader copies is, again, a bound manuscript, but this is a little, like, a step up. It will have an actual binding. It's going to have actual fonts. Um, it'll have more publicity information on the cover. Some It has a title, all of that stuff. So this is the next step up. Next, we have um, what is also called an uncorrected proof. So this is, again, a step up. This isn't a bound manuscript. This is even more corrected, edited, etc. This won't usually have a cover. So like the bound manuscript, it doesn't have a cover, but this is also, unlike the, unlike this bound manuscript, it is also like a real paperback book. Um, this is usually, this is the most common thing I've seen with advanced reader copies, this title, like this type of, um, arc, advanced reader copy is the uncorrected proof where it won't have a cover, it'll have the little advanced reader copy badge, stuff like that. And then finally, the last level before the final copy is an advanced reader copy, or just straight up, yeah, just advanced reader copy. This almost, not even, all, the advanced reader copy, the highest level, has a cover. It has a pub date, um, Usually when like I received this in March of 2019 and it came it comes out in April of 2019 So this is the closest um, An advanced reader copy will come to the final copy usually this has limited if any mistakes um, This should be pretty close to the final copy um, so yeah Those are the levels of advanced reader copies um, before I move on to the next thing I wanted to talk about. I wanted to say that in publishing, there are multiple names for advanced reader copies. They are usually called advanced reader copies, but most people call them ARCs because it's easy easier to do that. Um, ARCs are also called galleys, uncorrected proofs, bound manuscripts. Um, yeah, that's what they're usually called, but most of all, mostly they're called ARCs. Um, you also might see the term e-arcs, which is basically just a digital version of an arc. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is who sends them out. Um, almost every publisher I have interacted with and that I've seen sends out advanced reader copies because it gets the, the book out there before it's published. It gets people talking about the book and it's really helpful for the author and the publisher. Um, the people in charge of sending out ARCs are the marketing and publicity team. Now, I don't, still don't really understand the difference between marketing and publicity. Um, I'm sure there is a difference. I just haven't done much research on it. But basically, those two teams, they're publicists and marketing agents, I guess. Um, and they will reach out to bloggers, reach out to reviewers, and say, hey, would you like to read this book before it comes out, or would you give this book coverage on your Instagram or, or your YouTube channel, and stuff like that. Um, and finally, in the What Are ARCs section, I would like to talk about the legality and legal stuff of ARCs. Now, before I start talking about this, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know how all this stuff technically works, but this is just... Mostly what I've learned and partly my opinion. So advanced reader copies, you'll see, um, 
Hold on, let me find one that says it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, of course, none of the ones I picked out have it. Give me a second. Ah, here we go. So, almost all advanced reader copies have the little thing not for sale, not for resale. Um, I tried to do some research. There is technically no law that bans you from selling advanced reader copies, but it is frowned upon in the book community because not only does it hurt the publisher, it also hurts the author because they aren't getting any revenue or money from that sale and the thing is advanced reader copies are they are collector's items like i love collecting arcs it's a lot of people love collecting arcs um they're like first edition signed books stuff like that but they're not meant to be sold they're meant to be traded given away stuff like that they're i think of them as gifts and like, let, let me put it this way. If someone gave you a book, would you sell it? Like, how would you feel if someone, if you found out that you gave your, uh, let's just say you gave an iPad to someone and then you found out that they sold it to someone else? Um, it's fine. Basically, it's fine to distribute arcs, like give them away or trade them for another arc because just like regifting. I'm not making any sense. Basically, it's a, in my opinion, it's okay to trade arcs. It's okay to give away arcs. It's okay to mail arcs to someone else. But I don't think arcs should be sold just because that's not what they're made for. Anyway, now on to how to get arcs. Okay, the final part of this video is what to do once you've gotten an arc. So, for starters, it can be pretty scary when you get an arc. You're like, oh my gosh, I have this book. What do I do? Do I, like, review it or do I take a picture? It's it's kind of overwhelming. I still remember when I got my first book from a publisher. I'm not kidding. I cried. I was so excited. I was so overwhelmed. Um, hold on. I think it's up here. Yep. Yep, here it is. <laughs> Give Me Your Hand by Megan Abbott. This is the first book a publisher ever sent to me, and I opened it up, and I was literally in tears. I was so excited. I was so just frazzled. And then, as soon as the joy of getting my first book from a publisher settled down, I was like, okay, holy fork, what do I do? So here's what I recommend. One, first of all, don't wait forever to give coverage. Like, don't receive the book and then only a month later or two months later say, oh, by the way, I got this book from Little Brown or something like that. Do you, It's okay if you don't have time to take a picture of it or something like that right away. I would say a good time frame is within a week or two, get some sort of coverage out there. What I do is I take a picture of the book. If you look at my Instagram or my Goodreads, um, you'll see that I have pictures of the books that I, and then I say, I received this book from so-and-so, thank you to them for, um, sending me a copy. And that's another thing, um, in any coverage, any pictures or reviews or videos, you always say, this book was sent to me by so-and-so in exchange for an honest review or in exchange for coverage, or just this book was sent to me for free, um, you have to just put that as a disclaimer because um, that's the rule set by the FTC. The FTC is the Federal Trade Commission. It's an American agency, an American government agency that basically um, protects consumers from false advertising. Now, I'm not saying that you, you or you, the viewer is going to be like, oh, I'm going to lie and say this book is amazing. Everyone is almost always honest with their books, but you still have to have that legal disclaimer of, hey, this book was sent to me free for free, but it's not affecting my opinions. Um, what anyway? What I do is I take a picture of the book, I upload that picture on Instagram with like a caption of "Here's here are my thoughts." Uh, like I'm super excited for this book, or I've already read this book and it's really good. Thank you to blah 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 for sending this book, and then all the hashtags. And then on Goodreads, I um I use the image code to. 
it's a whole thing. Uh, basically, I take the image from Instagram, and then I put it on Goodreads, and on Goodreads, I have the image, and then I have a many thanks to blah 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 for sending me a copy in exchange for an honest review. I have my little reaction, or full review, and then my socials. And that's basically it. You just, my general thing is, if you haven't read the book yet, or you don't have a review yet, just post a picture, post the thank you to the publisher, and then that's all you have to do. And then that, you can just let that sit there until you've time to read the book and write the review. Um, next, as far as reviews and thoughts, be honest. I remember the first book, what was it? I think it was Vox by Christina, Chris, I think it's Christina Dashler. Let me check. I don't want to get the name wrong. Um, yep, Christina Dal. Sure, Dashler. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce her net last name. Her um, book, Vox. I wasn't a fan of it. Um, and I panicked. I was like, I don't know what to do. This book was sent to me, and I didn't like it. Let me tell you, it is a scary feeling, and it's a hard feeling, because you're like, I feel so bad. This book was sent to me for free. I don't want to say I hated it. But now, don't say you hated it. Don't trash the book, because that's just kind of mean. Um... But you you are required to be honest. Don't say, oh my gosh, this book was amazing if you didn't like it. Say you didn't like it. But in your review or in your coverage, don't just say, I didn't like this book. Or don't say, I hated this book. Give some reasons why. Like, I didn't like this book because the character was really annoying. Or this book wasn't well paced. Something like that. And also, um, make sure... Try to differentiate, is this a case of, I didn't like this book because it's not my preference, or is it a case of, this book is really bad? Because I found there, I give two star ratings to, I didn't like this book. Almost always books I didn't like, I, I Tucker, didn't like. That means that just because I didn't like them doesn't mean someone else won't like them. And I almost always state that in my review. I say, hey, I didn't like this book, but still feel free to check it out because you might like it. The rare case where I give one stars are books that I think are genuinely not worth reading. Books that are either hateful, like racism, sexism, homophobia, stuff like that, or books that are just so poorly written that they're not worth it. Um, but those are fortunately very rare. Um, another thing people have probably thought is, oh my gosh, if I say I didn't like this book, the publisher is going to hate me and they're never going to send me books again. That is not true. Publishers will definitely be disappointed. I mean, because obviously it's kind of sad when they put their time and effort into a book and you didn't like it. But they won't hate you. They won't ban you. They won't um, not talk to you. They will still probably send you books. Um, like, they're not going to hate you. Um, in fact, they would be more upset if you lied and said, I did like this book because no one likes liars. Um... So yeah, be honest, be kind, but honest. Be respectfully honest. Don't say, oh, this author is stupid. Don't say this book sucks because it's just an awful book. Give reasons why. Be kind, and you should be fine. Yeah, um, and then finally, what to do with the arcs if you didn't like it or if you're just, you don't want to keep it. My recommendation is trade it. There are multiple Goodreads groups. No, sorry, not Goodreads groups. There, I know there are Twitter hashtags, and there's one Goodreads group, Books for Trading, where you can trade your arc. You can say, hey, I see that you have this book. Can I trade that book, or uh, your copy of this, for my copy of this? So people can trade books. If you don't want to trade a book, give it to someone else. Again, back to the um, selling arcs. I personally don't like the idea of selling arcs. I think they're gifts to be given. Um... Not to be sold, but if you choose to sell arcs, you technically won't get in trouble because there are no laws that say you can't sell arcs. I think it's generally frowned upon, and I don't think you should do it, but it's your choice. So if you sell arcs, that's your choice. Um, but I think my opinion is give your arc to someone else as a gift, or trade it, or donate it to a library, or a high school. Um... Because again, they are they are gifts. They were given to you for free, so why not spread the generosity? Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about advanced reader copies. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions or comments or you want me to clarify something. Um, I will see you guys in the next video.
Bye. Why do I feel like I forgot to say something? Uh, mm, mm. I just have a feeling that I forgot to say something and I don't know what it is. Um. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> um. Well, my brain is not working today. <sighs> I'm sick. Don't judge me. So publishers do send arcs, advanced reader copies, but they also send review copies or finished copies. For instance, um, let me see. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. I can find one. Mm, my brain is not working today. Ah, here's one. Like this. Eat Cake, Be Brave by Melissa Radke. Radke? I don't know. Is that? Yep. I got her name right. Yay. So this was sent to me by Grand Central Publishing, but it's, as you can see, it's not an advanced reader copy. It's a hardcover. It was sent to me after the publication date. It's a finished copy. So this is what publishers will sometimes do. Um, if they run out of advanced reader copies, because advanced reader copies are limited, they don't print like an unlimited amount of them, um, they'll send reviewers finished copies. And then sometimes after a book's publication date, um, they will also send finished copies if they would still like to get even more publicity, even after the book has been published. Um, and of course there is a limit to how long they'll still send copies after it's been published. Like, if a book was published 20 years ago, they won't send you a review copy because it's old and it's there. it really doesn't need publicity or it can't get enough publicity at that point. But usually if a book has been published within the last, I would say, five or six months, you can probably get a review copy or a finished copy. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. Bye.